That's good. I need to close that, but I'm going to close that. Okay. That should be good. And then that'll do its thing. And then we'll be fine. Two, eh? Three, four, five, six. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I can't get a break right now. some personal stuff to try and do on the phone so I had to I have no idea how to mute it so like I had to hop off like right away and uh, yeah uh, turns out uh, they need more information and that was a uh, big waste so yay <laughs> we're having a good day More information that they cannot get direct from me. They need to talk to somebody else. It's like, okay, great. But it's a big game of telephone. good she should be working can I bring this up on you how do I bring this up on YouTube share there we go that worked Dang, that looks good.
Yeah, that's nice. That's real close. Pattern is almost stuck. Cool. I've been doing this for over a year. I still suck contamination. <laughs> Tried everything. Um, me. Let me try and help out on the next one. Might be stuff that you've seen already. Some of the biggest things is taping the sides, not cutting them too wide. That can make it easier to do. Bottom loading is always an option, but for like, <laughs> but keeping the sides flat is like major. So I'll try and show you a little better on this one or on this next one. Hope the phone call went well, it did not. I have to schedule uh, an ultrasound appointment and you know, they're busy so they don't pick up the phone. So waited like an hour and a half for like a call back. Then I just caught the call back, cool. And then they're like, yeah, so we need some more information. And I'm like, well, this is the information. And they're like, yeah, well, we need to actually have it written down from the doctor. So you have to call them and they have to write it down and then they have to fax it and then you can schedule it. I'm like, oh, okay. So that's going to take another three, four hours to get done. So that's fun. I want to do this for a living. How many years does it take to be a pro? Uh, you could definitely start making money on it um, within six months to like a year. It just depends on how much time you set aside to practice. Like people that really want to do it um, and have a knack for it, can get it pretty, uh, pretty quickly. There's a lot of resources out there that weren't there years ago. Um, but it's just practice on your own vehicle, come back, uh, watch some videos, ask questions. And cause there's, there's like a lot of, there's a lot of little things that happen that a lot of people uh, just <laughs> like if you were to film yourself trying versus like watching the video it's like those two things then start to look pretty different and so the classes that we teach have been really helpful to people because then it's like immediately pointing those things out but some people can kind of figure out, you know, just with trial and error and watching the videos. But I'd say like, one of the more frustrating parts about it is it's not just like learning the skill, it's like being able to build the business around it. So you can always find jobs at tinting locations and make money. But a lot of people want the independence around having their own. And so the challenge is like, depending on where you, where you are, 
growing that part of the business can can be really difficult, especially when your business then looks like everybody else's. You always have to figure out unique things and ways. So we just got our whole business website redone. So like even for me, it's like videos are great and all, but they don't pull in hundreds of people. We still suffer from like the same slowdowns and the same supply and demands and we have to do regular things to try and keep that side busy. Let's get this in there. Did I do this front one? No, I didn't. Okay. Good. Let that tack up for a second. I need more monitors. I'm trying to tint mini cars, any advice? Mini? Like Mini Cooper? There, it's all set. All right, that one's good. Have you ever been to Silver Lake? 
A uh, long time ago, I was out in that area. This was with the, uh, the youth group back in my teen days. Um, and I don't know whose bright idea it was. Uh, but we walked across the sand dunes to Lake Michigan. And so we were like walking through desert for probably about an hour and a half, like two hours. Like it was a long time. I thought it was gonna be quick. Like seeing how much your business grew, thank you. Yeah, I'm really excited for the project that we have coming up. I, I just, I thought it was gonna be a lot more of this, refining and, you know. But, I don't know, just when you see those really interesting opportunities, like I wasn't gonna add paint film, and I'm still like, the only reason I'm going down that road is like, it's like, okay, I got some extra help and I am not gonna be Mr. Paint Film as well. It's just too many, too many hats to wear. It doesn't make sense at all. I'll learn about it, but oh my God. As you scale your business, you cannot be in charge of everything. You need to have other people help with stuff. <sighs> What's the oldest car you've tinted? Just classic stuff. It's been not a lot. There's a video on the channel of like a 60s Ford Falcon. I prefer, I prefer not to though. This says slip and not strip, right? <laughs> not yes. The last okay. Uh, I gotta get that pallet shipped over here. That was the other thing I was gonna call him about. We got tint strip and tint slip. But I need a pallet shipped over here. Is your, is your dad still in the shop? How's it doing? Uh, it's, yeah, it's still around. It's still doing all right. Um, slower, uh, there's been actually some family drama, literally within the last couple days, so I have to call and learn about all that. I kind of know, but, all right, like I know, but yeah, not looking forward to that. Um, but it's uh, it's been slower, and I think that's the story for a lot of people right now. But we're coming through the end of winter time. So I'm sure it'll pick back up some, but it's like, just in general, people don't have the money that they did. Everything's more expensive. So it's gonna be a, uh, an interesting year, that's for sure. the best way to promote your business? Uh, there is no best way. It's a lot of things to help get any business that you can. Whether that be traditional postcards in the mail, just send up thousands of them. Uh, going to other local businesses, associated services, and seeing if you can build partnerships there. You know, like one of the ways that I didn't really worry about it so much before was I was tinting for other companies. We had multiple mobile accounts and there were times that everybody got slow, but there are plenty of times as well when like one would get busier, the other one would get slow. So there was always like business. And when you have a skill, you're, you just, you're making money when you're putting it to work. So if you can't do it 
on your own and you need to offset that, go find other companies that want to add that service. But, you know, you have your traditional social postings. I think the best thing that you can do right now is get a really nice website and funnel Google ad traffic over there because those are people that are actively looking for places to go. So when you, you're one of the first people that pop up and you look the best, where do you think they're gonna go? That's why Google ads is still one of the number one places to get business. Facebook ads can still be effective. The biggest difference between like a Facebook ad or an Instagram ad and like a Google ad is Google again is people that are looking for it for Facebook, Instagram, and, and a lot of other social ones. You're kind of popping up like a billboard. So there's a good chance that they're, they're interested in your category, but they're not necessarily looking for you. They're not necessarily looking for your service. So you have to do a couple things though. You have to come up with a good creative ad and you have to just put yourself in front of enough people like a billboard. So that's why I say Google ads are definitely like the better route to just immediately try and do it. But you have to send people over from somewhere, from Google to somewhere that convinces them that you are the place to go with. You can't just, like, if you have a real rough looking site, you're not gonna convert a lot of that traffic. But yeah, I did some, uh, some deep dives into all of this a few months ago. And it's like, there really is no magic bullet for it all. It's just kind of, you should be doing a lot of everything. Because you'll get jobs. You get some jobs kind of from everything. So, but if you notice like from all those things that you do, pick a few, try them. And then as some of those work out, then, uh, double down on them. You can always put more money on paid ads. Ew, what the fuck is this? Ew, that's speckly. How did that happen? I don't even know. This one's speckly as shit up here. Right in here. Well, that's no good. Alright. Bummer, dude. We'll get this one, one of these days. Oh, that's really stuck. Is it my film? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely dirt. I think. Yeah, for sure. Inspection stickers? Uh, I don't... I'm thankful that I don't have to deal with those. Let me get a new blade here. Somewhere, it's somewhere around here. Oh, this is jam packed full of shit. All right, I'll grab this one now. Uh, I don't know. I've heard people with paper stickers, they'll just cut out a square. I don't think that's great. But like you kind of have limited options. Like if it's a paper one, then it's probably going to get trashed. Because if you get it wet and try and tin over it, it'll just basically dissolve. So that's a problem. But if they're not, then you could try and just remove them and uh, kind of stick them back. I would stick them to like something that's removable. So like a piece of static cling film or something, 
or just hand them to the customer and say, here you go. Uh, but the Facebook group, the window tint Facebook group with like 80,000 people, that's a good question for that. And you'll get some feedback from people that actually have to deal with that. Because thankfully I don't. Okay, so this is 15. We're not making that mistake. We just gotta start over with this pattern now. There's that. But yeah, tint, marketing your tint business, that's, uh, that's just local business problems. So I'd start doing a lot of research outside, just my suggestions, like just try and find, oh my god, that was a fucking spider, that's weird. <laughs> Today's just weird now. But... Yeah, there's uh, a lot of a lot of content on stuff to do for local business marketing because every local business will have very similar problems with that. Especially when you're talking about services that are, you know, a lot of people are shopping around uh, and don't really know. You know, like if I were to get a deck installed at my house, it's like, I don't know. Salesman said something nice about this material over that material. It's it's hard to know. So you gotta do, I mean, you gotta think of like, you try and always think of as if you were a consumer and try and answer a lot of your own questions as much as you can. Don't just like, we're an awesome tinting place. Figure out what types of problems they're having and what questions you would have and try and be the person that answers those as best you can. Shit's still going. Cool.
Greetings from Poland. What's up? Got a little, little bump on this one. Trim this down just a smidge. And we'll be ready to install this. There we go. Cool. I'll just leave it there. All right, round two. What did we do wrong? We had dirt. We had dirt up here. So I don't know if that was just from carrying it or if there was something along the top. It doesn't really look like the top's dirty. It's kind of weird. I don't know, but sometimes that happens. So wipe off the top edge to be sure. Squeegee the whole thing top to bottom. And then... Oh yeah, somebody asked about contamination. So we're gonna flush this side. Spray. So we gotta be very direct about everything. When the film wrinkles up, bunches up, it's always an opportunity for dirt to get sucked into it. I'm gonna be just real careful with everything. So I'm gonna scoop it up in the center. And then I'm gonna start with this long side here. So it's kind of like laid out flat here. I'm gonna roll up this side, get some film on the glass, and then I'm going to make sure it's flat. And then I'm gonna roll up the tint portion and we're gonna just slide it into that seal, right like that. So it didn't bunch up or anything. We're gonna keep this going across. I'll pull this back a little from the side seal. And then same thing, we're gonna tuck that into the side and line this up. So if I had pulled it back in a way that really made the whole thing like fold and bunch up, you just wanna be really careful about that kind of stuff. Because anytime uh, there's like a negative space there, so like a finger, it, what it does is it creates a vacuum. And so like air and water and stuff rush in there to fill that space. So that's why like you can clean your windows a hundred times. It'll still find a way to like suck trash from like the inside edges. Nice. That's good. Cuts turned out good. Make sure that's close. Cool. Once it's sticking, we're good to roll it up. So we rolled it up, we're going to rinse the under, underneath. Any tips on seeing a back window for the first time? Watch the videos and just go through it. <laughs> like, you'll learn a lot. There's like, it's just a trial and error and then you kind of figure out things that you messed up on and then I can be a little bit more specific on things that can help you out. You expect to mess up. And it might not go as, it might not go that bad. But go through it and you'll learn a lot. And that's how you get better at tinting. It's like you have to embrace the fuck ups and just make sure you learn something. Because then you don't quite repeat it in the exact same way. You still always have like random screw ups and stuff like this window. I don't really know why it turned out so speckly there. 
but it was definitely an issue. Uh, do you sell your own tools? Yeah, 313tint.com. Uh, that's what all, all that stuff over there is. Um, stuff that we've actually made, yeah. Uh, so this, this tape right here that I use on the side seals, seal guard. Uh, the door cover that I use to keep water from getting in the switches and everything. Panel guard, that's us. Um, glass aid that's going to be put on this windshield and it's on the back glass too. That's us. Clay bars. And uh, we sell just like pretty much everything that we use. What's your thoughts on high tech? Uh, I haven't used it in person, but I know a lot about like the company it comes from and everything. So they're, they have good films. And I like the way that they're supporting their dealers. It's like a very similar story to, to GeoShield's come up too. So yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't go wrong with them. They give you free hot chocolate. They give you a lot of free stuff, which is cool to see. Probably more so than Geo. Lots of like, you know, for like a first order, you see a lot of people posting like lots of tools and stuff, which is pretty sweet. Some of it's good. I think they go a little overboard with everything, but it's all in good fun. Like not that they give away too many things, but they slap their logo on anything and everything. And some of those things just Kind of like, eh, it's not so great, but it's free. I was using Geo, just switch to high tech. Interesting. That's fine. Whatever you switch to, as long as you feel like it's filling some sort of void that the other company was not living up to. Oh, it looks okay. Eh. Yes and no. Depends on where I angle it. All right, let's scrub this down. So I'm gonna prep this windshield and while it's drying, I am going to work on the back slider. It's a way to save some time. Don't ever just hang around waiting for something to dry when you can be doing something else. I had a F-350 windshield this morning. Same windshield, slightly different dash. Lots of up-downs.
So I'm going to put this right on the outside of these dots. It's just good spacing for it. Trim. And like that. We can sheet it. Okay, so that's going to set up I feel like it's a little late. I want to make sure it's not. There we go. Should be better. Camera looks nice. <sighs> Placement's hard though. Okay, back window. So, we'll get a slider. And, oops, this all up. Let's put this down. Oh, we should take these out first. Yes. So these pop out. Now I got room. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that advice. We're gonna use a liner. We're gonna cut out just that one piece, and we're gonna cut out two pieces at the same time. Uh, does Gio have a minimum purchase amount? No. No, thankfully no uh, startup startups and territories, which is. I think good for most people, but it's here. All right, so one at each. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to cut a template. Where is, there's my stool. Let me grab that. Been using Geo for seven months, love their films instead of my customers. Nice. Yeah, I just like all the, please tell me I didn't cut this short. There we go. Let's see. I was at one point using Lumar, but it was too expensive. They went two thousand dollars up front. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a company like Lumar will. All right, so we're good. Let me trim that out. But yeah, like. I think the two most interesting companies to kind of follow right now is really GeoShield still and high tech. Xpel is always a I think an honorable mention in that because they're always growing their business and really like unique creative ways but it's a lot more territorial dealer focused so it's like if I was an expel dealer 
talk about all the cool shit that they're doing, a lot of people would feel left out, which is kind of a problem. So if that, if that kind of business fits your business, then that's very, very cool. But I'm not a big fan of, I don't know, it's, they just have to really work for you. And as they grow, they're limited on territories and then they end up having to squeeze their dealers. So lots of price increases, lots of kind of like forced product carrying and uniformity and There's, there's definitely pros and cons to that. Oh my god, I gotta clean this off. I just wanna cut over it. It's too much tedious. There, get that out of the way. So this is linered. And what I'm gonna do is trim out one here on the board. And then we're gonna install it. And then we're gonna do another one. Realistically, I could cut out both at one time, I just forgot. So now I'm doing just one. I gotta figure out which side this is for. Johnson's? No. I'm not familiar enough with them. It's just like, it's one of those, like, I like Matico, where it's like, I know they've been around for a long time. I just like, don't hear about them, haven't used their films like like a one time years and years ago and I don't really remember. I didn't even, I couldn't even tell you what it is. There's a few, there's, there's a handful of companies like that where it's just like you don't hear about them, nobody really talks about them. They're just kind of average. So, this is for this side. So if we reverse it, it'll be for the other side. Oh, math, hang on, need more space too. So, when I say math, I mean, <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta flip one side and I didn't keep track. Okay, so this is this way. So if we just flip it down this way, I don't have my other pattern. I wanna, I wanna invest in a plotter. What would you recommend? Ooh. Um. Honestly, the workhorse one, <laughs> I like the little better than the two. I just had like more problems with the two. And it was, it's just kind of like where they put the roller or the the back rollers on it. The machine looks nicer, but like, I liked my workhorse one. It just didn't look super appealing. But if I could afford it, I'd spring for a graph tech and, or a, uh, not graph tech, uh, probably a Jag instead. They're really not that expensive. So the one big annoyance that has really like always been frustrating, has always been frustrating, is the roller alignment. So no matter what, with a workhorse one or a workhorse two, if you use 36 or 24 inch rolls, you're always like half on a roller. because they're, they're vinyl machines that do work for window tint. So we're getting a, I'm getting a new machine for paint protection film. And I was shopping around 
it seems like everybody has just like had the same machine for like the last fucking 10 years. Like nobody's updated anything. It's kind of sad. So like there's, I was gonna possibly get a Roland, but then they put out this interesting looking version that looked cool. And then next thing I know, it's like, oh, I guess that model didn't really work out because you can't find it anywhere. It was only released like three years ago, but they don't sell it. So then I've heard mixed things on Roland's in general, and then I ended up, uh, I'm like, it, it's either a Jag or a, a Graph Tech at that point. So I'm just like, ah, eh, fuck it, I'll just get a Graph Tech. New Rollins. My buddies have new Rollins in the shop and they work perfectly. I'm sure they would. I, I just saw like some mixed comments on it that kind of threw me off and it's like, I don't think I'm wrong or right going with one, one over the other. Ugh. Oh, there. Let me grab one of these. in there. I'd rather get Graph Tech on the price versus the Roland. Yeah, they're really not that far off. I'm familiar with Graph Tech. Honestly, you can have just as many finicky problems with them as any other machine. Dots on the windshield, is there anything you can do? No, not really. There, I don't sand it. I wouldn't recommend it. Anything that's abrasive that goes into this, you're going to start seeing scratches. You have to use a very fine grit sandpaper, and you really, have, like, for the thin areas, you're really not going to be able to do anything. So it's, it's only just about getting, like, the real heavy areas there. Okay, clay bar. I'm going to clay these defrosters. So I want to warm my clay bar up a little bit. Just gonna let that sit in there for a sec. Um, I use ceramic shield. My business is really nice, good stretch, is it, and it isn't as expensive. That's GeoShield's PPF, right? Do you recommend 20 over factory tint or 5% over factory tint? Uh, that's personal preference. 20 over 20 is going to bring it down to 5. And 5 over 20 is going to make it, like, stupid dark. Are you thinking about getting into vinyl or a color change? Yeah, all the extra, like... I'm assuming whoever is going to do PPF is also going to kind of be able to do vinyl. Those skills usually cross over in some way. I know they're like totally different, but you generally like, you have a much easier time doing that versus window tint and then only like PPF. But yeah, there's a whole interesting world of uh, colored PPFs now, which I basically look at as premium vinyl. So yeah, we would absolutely um, dive into that world. I do not know, I, like I've heard of a few companies, like, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> so, who? It's it's really just shopping companies, and the, because of all the content that we're gonna do from it, we're basically gonna be able to do like feature spots and collabs with like some other companies and stuff. Tesla started offering it for 6K. I've seen like eight. Maybe it just depends on the vehicle, but yeah, that whole world is exploding. 
I didn't know, like, I've said this a few times now, but I was not looking at PPF at all. I am not going to sugarcoat it. It is a very tough business. I've done it before, and you have the same and more problems with PPF that you have with window tint. It's really like, you have to go after people that want to spend and have the money to spend 2500 for a front end. Eight grand for like a complete, <laughs> like the whole car. And so, it's just like a real high-end business. So then, window tint basically becomes kind of an afterthought. So growing that business is a real grind. And it's got a steep learning curve. But there's a ton of interest and growing interest around not just the clear, but all the colored options. So I would like to add the service and then we're gonna be building um, a whole training program around it on top of a whole nother channel. So I've got like a whole bunch of stuff lined up for it. Cool, so that one worked out. So let's remove this. But like two months ago, if you're like, hey, if you had a hundred grand to dump into your business, what would you do? And I'd say, I have no fucking clue. <laughs> Other than more of like what I'm doing now, it really wouldn't make a difference. And uh, well, now we're going to expand into that and do a whole lot of interesting stuff. So, I'm excited for that. We don't have to join it. It's just kind of a why not type of thing. Oops. Okay. Not now. Apple Music pops up when you turn your headphones on. That's weird. Okay, let me make sure this works. One second. Okay, cool. I can't hear myself. That's good. Usually what sells is the front end. Yeah, I can see that. I did in the neighborhood of like 20-ish front ends, like hoods and stuff like that. But I did it like years ago, so I'm way out of practice with it. I also never had like a lot of proper training for it. So it's a, it's gonna be real interesting. Films have gotten more user friendly. There's more variety, there's more support behind it. There's more interest. Uh, but yeah, front ends are like the worst. If it wasn't for front bumpers, PPF would be a slam dunk. But front bumpers are just, you mess them up. It's a giant piece. They're very time consuming. If you're bulking it, it's a lot of intricate cuts. There's a lot of reasons to, <laughs> to hate it. Protection film on a windshield. I've done it. A little bit. I wasn't super stoked about the product though. Like that was the only thing. Was like, I, I, I had the ceramic version on my Explorer for like a month. 
and like it was just so orange peely and blurry. We just ended up like getting frustrated and pulling it off. But I haven't seen, I keep forgetting, I, I haven't seen Exo Shield. I really just saw like a couple and it wasn't, it wasn't Exo. So, but I've just kind of, I hear things. So it's a very thick material and the thicker the material, the harder it is to not have an orange peel look. I had Sunstoppers do mine and it looked terrible. Ooh. Yeah. I think a lot of shops add it because it sounds cool and it's a big service. But man, I'm telling you, when you get in the weeds with it, There's a channel that tried three windshield films. It might have been Chicago. I've seen that video. Uh, that video is so helpful. I mean, and, and the more I, I learn about the category, there's rigid versions, and then there was the, uh, there's the stack soft version. If it's soft, wipers are gonna scratch it. And, you know, it's a really challenging thing to, uh, to address. If it's rigid, uh, it just makes it harder to install. And then there's also the clarity issues. So, still, even if you, if you get a perfect one, it's really, again, only a very high-end thing. It doesn't make sense to spend 500 to to $1,000 on your daily driver windshield to protect it when it cost less than that to replace it but on particular windshields with all the 8s systems that are required like windshield replacement is way more expensive than it used to be so in some cases especially on the way more expensive vehicles it makes sense what was that <gasps> Oh my god, I love this camera. When it it gives me a 10 minute warning for battery. So watch this. We're going to we're going to set you guys here and then I'm going to swap the battery. It'll take like 2 seconds. It's like a heart transplant. So we're going to put you on some life support there. This is your new one. And pop this out. Ta-da! Here's your heart. We'll pop another one back in. And then we're gonna take off your light support. That was painless. We got another like couple hours of streaming. That's cool. Not really brands that have mastered PPF yet, like vinyl and tint. I mean, I think Xpel is probably like at the top of that list. They have software down. They have their program down. I, it's hard to compete with them. But it is growing with Lumar and some other ones too. Any tips on reducing contamination when installing windshields? Well, good news for you is we're gonna do a windshield after this. So let me figure out how I'm gonna do this truck back window real quick. <sighs> I've done so many plotted rear sliders. <laughs> I'm gonna do this though.
You gotta do it on the inside. Yeah, we'll be using, so their, their ceramic shield line, and then their standard PPF. We'll be using both of those, and then we'll just kind of see where, like, colors and stuff fall. I have no idea on that whole space. I think the whole category is just, like, is really interesting right now. And even if this program all falls on its face, we'll have another pretty bay. So that's exciting. But we're also doing a flat glass training wall as well. So like flat glass was gonna be like the main addition anyways. And then I got, I got distracted by like this whole PPF setup that we have going on. But for sure, we're gonna do training around it. So like for the shop, it's gonna make sense regardless. The big unknown is, is like, are we, is it gonna be able to make sense just as a service? And I, uh, I will not sugarcoat that at all. <laughs> it's a grind. There we go. Yeah, close enough. This would be a good template. Will workhorse be good enough for a year or two over a graph tech? Uh, yeah, like they're they're fine machines. We'll show you the biggest caveat to them though. I hope I didn't just cut this short. Okay, that's gonna be like that. Mm, nope, we're just big enough. Wow, that's rare. Um, but there's also, there's also like the in-between machines. So like, I don't have one, but I hear good things about, about Jags. Cause ro like graph text can be finicky too as well. I've used them, but for this PPF thing, I'm, gonna get one just because it's a more robust machine either that or I'll get a jag too okay there we go this should be my template Yes, cool. Everything's good on this one. Peel. Going for full coverage right now. Just 
Just don't want to spend five or eight K in a graph tech. Yep. Totally get it. They're I think they're all finicky. I was looking at the machines and I was looking at older videos. Nobody's got an updated machine. Nobody has a machine that was like just put out within like the last two years. Everybody seems like they're like five years and older. Cool. There's that. Use the same percentage. Sweet. Let's button this back up. Then we'll get the windshield to do. I was seeing if I could contact Workhorse. Okay, so Workhorse is a, a Plotter Depot brand. So they actually do have a Workhorse 3. I don't know when it's coming out, and there's a good chance that it might be red. <laughs> uh, but they actually are building a machine. Um, it's been a couple years in the works, and... I forgot to check with them recently at when it's when they plan on being able to launch it. My guess is it's probably going to be in the twenty five hundred dollar range, but they basically took they took a lot of feedback from me, um, but just from like the whole community on just like you know what features are they missing, and it's like the main things is really just like wider rollers. They have a vacuum system. They have presets, and it's just like all those fiddly things that you're going to get from a better machine. It just does, isn't going to have, you know, the exact same build quality, but like I, the build quality of it has been a smaller portion of my gripes with it. Like when you're trying to move the rollers, they stick. That's kind of annoying, but like I haven't had any, any problems with it just like not working. And I've had the same types of issues with like, I've had like similar issues where when you try and cut something with a graph tech, it just cuts through both or it doesn't cut through enough. And it's like, so they all have the same type of cutting issues. I wish if you sprung for a graph tech, they'd all just like cut <laughs> when you need them to. And they do, but as soon as they stop, then it's a lot of finicky trial and error but I'll show you on the rollers what I mean since you're familiar with the graph deck you kind of understand the problem here so this is the this is that workhorse too um, my biggest gripe with like the rear rollers is that they're up a little high so when the material feeds back here that doesn't give it a lot of space it's generally been fine, but it's not going to be fine with everything. And then the biggest thing here is the roller positions here. So you don't have one long roller. You have a lot of small rollers. So when you take a 36, it's basically here on this far right roller. And then it's like in the middle here on this far left one. You don't have full coverage with a 36 or a 24 inch roll at all. It's all half rollers. Um, I'm ready to buy a workhorse too. Go to Plotter Depot and just shoot a message and ask them. Here, I got a contact. I'll shoot him a message while we're live. Maybe I'll get a response. He's usually pretty quick. How many feet comes in a glass age roll? A hundred. So you can do about eight to, no, you can do about 10, 10 back windows and windshields. Sometimes a little bit more.
can I buy the workhorse three? Well, if it's not out yet. <laughs> but maybe they'll have a maybe they'll have a listing where you can get notified so you don't have to check cuz then like, you know, I'm sure they're not going to have a 100 of them. Or like a th you know, just supply and demand. If they release a machine that's like super budget friendly and perfect, it's probably going to sell out pretty quick and then they got to get more made. It's usually how that kind of stuff goes. But you also have early production runs and you want to make sure your machines are are working or workhorse working right. Was this a Torx or a Phillips? God, why did I think it was a Phillips? Uh, four, no, you can use a 40. 40s are fine. 40s and 20s will line up better. The 40s are more ideal for more situations when it comes to plotters. They're not perfect, but they're generally, you can squeeze a little bit more. I just, when I'm handling film, I like 36 and 24s. 20s are nice to have as well. It's just when you're trying to keep your inventory a little bit lower. So for example, this is a 36, 36 inch roll of film right here. And it's plenty tall enough for this windshield and most windshields. So it's just, I, I got so used to doing 36 and 24s. So if you wanna make inventory just a little simpler like there's less reason for me to own 40s but you could do either you could do 40s or you could do 36s and then i suggest doing 24s so they'll cover more truck windows silverados f-150s Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? We'll stream on TikTok. Have you done the Cybertruck? No. <laughs> nope. And I have a good feeling that I am gonna be left behind on that train. That always seems to be the case. Some of those newer vehicles come out. And I'm usually later in line with them. I suck at shrinking. How do I get better? Um, it's usually just paying attention to a couple things. Shrinking is not... When you understand the, the, the basic rules of it, which a lot of people kind of miss it. So that is something that a hands-on class can get you going within a day or two. We've had people that have never touched film before be able to shrink by the end of the class. It's just it's really easy to miss a couple of things. And it just depends on the person. Sometimes if I point it out in a video, that'll be fine. And I, I point it out in a whole lot of videos. But some people need just that real-time correction, but I'll try and do it as good as I can here. Ooh, I'm talking about TikTok. All right. I think my other microphone 
Do you give a starter kit? Uh, I give a full tin keg and like a full kit. So it's it's not some crappy little take home belt with a couple of squeegees. It's like it's the best it's the best class it really is. Here, through and three tint dot com. You can check out the class listing. We're gonna be adding more classes, I think. This this coming up one is booked out almost. Here, let me take off this microphone because I'm not going to trust it yet. Let's plug this in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we go all out for the classes. Okay, so let's see. Oh, that worked. Okay, cool. All right, so both mics are back up and running. So we'll put that. Do you like this? I got one. So one's got to connect to the iPad, and the other one's got to connect to the camera that I'm using. So this is going to be for TikTok here. Okay, sweet. And then we'll just see, we'll see if this whole whole train will work together. I'm gonna to move the laptop over here. I got a crabby server apron, two cheap Chinese squeegees. I know, most of, at 1.8K, I need to raise my prices in the class. Oh yeah, we go nuts with the class. <laughs> okay, so. What's up Chicago? Hang on, we're gonna flip this. Have you thought about changing locations? Are you comfortable there? Oh yeah, we definitely thought about it. And especially rather than building a thousand square feet of loft space, it's just expensive. <laughs> and uh, so is moving. So, all right. Um, hey Mark, you wanna hold the iPad for this? And I'll go through the windshield install? Yes. What time is it? Three. Oh, okay, so we got time. Um, ceramic tint. All right, we're going live. Three, two, one. Is it gonna? Oh, I don't have to mirror it. Oh, that's cool. Sweet. There you go. So it should just kick in. Hopefully. My chat will work, and I'm still live on YouTube, so. I can let you know too, right? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so the main rules that people miss with a windshield setup here, I'm trying to show you YouTube as best I can, is like first we have a dryer sheet. So we're using snuggles and I recommend if you're going to use a dryer sheet, use that. So that is just evenly layered and you have that white haze there. So you put your film on top of that, make sure it's all dry. You want to take a card, grab in the middle, smooth that out. So it's flat in the middle. And then you take these edges and you want to just flatten those down. And that way all this bulk material here is now flat down the sides and flat in the middle because that's what you're going to be shrinking. So let me grab my heat gun. We'll start shrinking this side. Live stream working? Sweet. All right. So heat gun pointed 45 degree angle uh, in the direction that you're shrinking and you're just going to start shrinking the first area in the middle that is loose. So you have this loose material and everything that sticks up from the windshield needs to be shrunk. And you're just gonna go back and forth and you're gonna heat it and keep the heat gun moving until it turns into these little sideways waves. And then you wanna smooth those 
forward, push them in the direction that they would go. If they were just to continue into like a beach, a shoreline there, you got this loose material, so that's what needs to be shrunk next. Make sure that edge is flat, and then just continue. Can I come work with you guys for a couple of days? Uh, you yes. can definitely take the class. <laughs> come hold the camera. Come hold the camera. Actually, <laughs> you know what? That's an interesting idea, but you have to like hold a camera. It would be a great way to learn. It, <laughs> it would be. You don't get any hands on, but actually it might be a little, nah, I don't know. Probably just hold the camera. <laughs> Right, that would be different. There we go. And you're just heating it until that smooths out. There you go. And then we're gonna start with another quarter. So we do this in sections. So anytime I get near this edge here on the side, where some people get screwed up is sometimes you have a finger that'll go out like that. And when it's bunched up like that, you're gonna screw up the whole corner. You always gotta make sure that's flattened out. But it's just this over and over again. So when you, you don't have to go fast, you just gotta try and evenly put some heat. <laughs> try UK cars, ugh. I don't envy any of the German stuff. We still get it over here, but I don't get near as much of it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like your dad, like your dad taught you to hold a flashlight. <laughs> Can you hold it straight? It's very true. All right, so that's good. We're going to go to the other side. <sighs> Any TikTok stuff? Okay, cool. Yep, TikTok feed's working too. Nice. Tesla Model X, yeah, that's a, that's a bitch of a windshield that I have never had to do yet. And uh, not looking forward to the day that I have one. They're just those cars that suck to get. That would be one of them. I was dreading a Model 3 back window until I got it though, but I'm pretty sure the X windshield would just not be. I won't be live for that one. Good for visits. Yeah. <laughs> it's not good for sanity, though. Yeah, <laughs> give him the I don't want to do it price. Yep. I wasted so much ceramic on a Model Y windshield. I feel like I would be in that boat too. I bet you I could shrink it. I'm not, I'm worried more about the actual install. Just getting like a hair right in the driver's line of sight, I feel is, is, is almost like, like no way around it. <laughs> it's gonna happen. What was that question? Uh, is this ceramic? Yes. Yeah, we're doing ceramic 50% on the windshield right now.
Kepler. I haven't used it. Um, same thing from same thing about Union. I know about the company some, but I haven't used them. The people seem pretty nice. Model 3 for all sides, or what? What was the rest of that comment? This, uh, that's a different oh, okay. I missed the comment. Uh, this is 50%. We have a white towel in there now. So when this is all set, we did 15 on the fronts, 20 over the factory, which brings it down to 5. And so when all this is buttoned up, it's not going to look too dark on the front. It's going to look nice and going to have a nice privacy look on the sides. All going to blend together really, really well. Do you still use metal scrapers? Do you still use metal? Yeah, I actually pretty much only use razor blades. They work better. I'm not worried about scratching. You just have to hold a razor blade really flat. I always spray the window when you go to cut it. I've actually damaged a couple with plastic scrapers, so I've never scratched up a windshield from a metal one. Yes, the window is curved. The window is always curved. Film is always flat until you mold it. Have you tried global window films? Yeah, I've tried global, um, just their QDP, their Quick Dry Plus. Um, they have a really solid color stable line and they have a good ceramic film. I don't believe they have any in between carbon options and so when you know a little bit more about manufacturers and suppliers and like where certain people's films come from it starts to take all the the pretty branding out of the mix and you know a little bit more about like the reliability of those films and so there's a lot of people that have films that are right in line with global um, but they also source other manufacturers so they can have variety like carbon and carbon ceramics and stuff like that. What's that silver line you're cutting on? What is the silver line? Uh, so this is a product called Glass Aid. It's to help see the edge, but it also prevents the blade from scoring the window. Because for as much as we're making off of the tint job, we would lose all of it as soon as we scratch the window. So a little extra barrier there to help protect that. There's a few different ways of doing it. I like this way the best though. It so looks like TikTok comments are inconsistent. Oh yeah, what percent is that front tape? 50. Oh yeah. So 50 on the front. 15 on the sides. TikTok was coming through and then it was not. So that's kind of a bummer. So once this is trimmed out, we gotta do a little cleaning on the inside and then this is gonna, this is gonna go to the inside of the window. O Perez says, how strong is the blade if you can scratch glass with it? How strong is the blade that you can scratch glass? Uh, you can scratch glass with a whole lot of things, uh, but it's a stainless steel blade. We actually use softer metals to try and not scratch the window. But it's that, that balance between like, you need something to cut the film. Trying to start my own shop and came across your life, cool. Yeah, ask away, man. Whatever questions I can help out with. Okay, so I'm gonna peel the tape away. 
we're gonna go through and just touch up the top and bottom edges. So when you trim out a windshield, see how that all stays together? Yay. So when you trim out a windshield though, you cut away some of that shrink, you know, cause we shrunk past where we just trimmed it. So there's some little wobbly edges there and you wanna make sure that those don't pop up on the inside. So if it doesn't lay flat on the outside of the window, you can't expect it to lay flat on the inside of the window. So I always do this as a little extra precaution. I'm gonna smooth this back out. And remember, we can only shrink at the top and bottom. So I'll smooth that out and any of these wrinkles here, especially, I'll run the heat gun within an inch or two. Right, like that. So heat it, you'll see it flatten out. But you gotta get the heat gun real close. How do you keep the film together when double cutting? Um, I, it might just be the way that you have it oriented. I'll have film facing outwards for both sides, so it usually sticks, so it's like liner to liner. And with the water in between, you squeegee it together. And it's pretty good. Do you ever have ceramic peel up at the bottom when it's installed? Um, so, yeah, I've had that, but with a good film, it's really a supplier issue. If you've installed other films before and you're having unique issues with your ceramic film, it's the film, it's not really you. And enough of them install without that type of issue. So I, I would find somebody else's film that's not gonna do that, because that would kind of scare me. Do you always have to shrink the film? Do you always have to shrink? Yes. Especially big old rounded glass like this. And what's the standard rate to charge for vehicles? That's the guy that's starting to shop. What's the standard rate? To charge. To charge. Yikes. <laughs> Uh, you got to do a little bit of market research, figure out what other shops are charging because like there really is no universal standard rate. I would just advise probably don't ever charge below 250 for the sides and back and then have a solid upgrade path. But I would call around, I would see where other shops are at so just to get an idea because you got to figure out some of your expenses too when you're building your business. How do you get rid of the little fingers? Um, like I showed, you have to uh, make sure your film is gonna lay flat before you install it. And so make sure all those edges are tightened up. If they pop up after the fact, it just depends on where they pop up. Some of them pop up in really bad spots where you can't address it very, very easily. But if they're just simple touch-ups on the top and the sides, you're a lot better and you just take a heat gun and you can usually warm them up and get them to lay flat. Damn. I need to put a, you know what I need to do? I need to put a little tripod mount thingy on top of that and then you can do both. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Ooh. I can do that with my game. Let's see, I think you might be able to do it with this. Oh, I got a trick. Oh, yeah. Oh, then I'll have a handle? Yeah. Okay. We're going to set this up so then we can do both. And then this just clips on. There. Anytime you want to see the framing, it'll time out, but you can just tap the screen. So. Yeah. <laughs> eh, maybe put it on the other side. <laughs> That's not bad, though. Then I don't have to worry about it. How do you get the dot matrix to lay down? Yeah. Dots are always going to be, they're, they're, uh, there's always going to be a silver line around them. Look at anybody else's car that has aftermarket tint and you're going to see them. So you just got to get used to seeing them. It sucks, but that's just how it is.
fast and easy to learn if you have good equipment. That does help. Good tools always help, but a good tool is not going to make you a good tinter. So much of it is just repetition, but there's a lot of really piss poor quality ones. The cheap rubber squeegees and the really cheap triangle tools, those are like scratch up film. So I'd suggest getting some like better ones, but everything else is like, you know, just pick and choose. Tinting tools really like a full set. You could spend five, $600 on like an impact gun. You, you, if you have $500 for tint tools, like you've bought more than everything. So rel like if you're looking to build it as a business, then like 100% just get, get good stuff. But if you're just looking to like do a couple windows or something like that, usually you can get by with some like shitty ones for a little bit, but you might have some scratches. Good what blades. Kind of, what kind of soap do you use? Uh, so we use a soap called Tint Slip. It's an actual tint soap. Baby shampoo is a good alternative that will work for a fair amount of films. The idea is just as long as your film kind of slides around, then you're all right. If it's really, really sticky, you need something with a little more juice. How do you know what glass is safe for razor blades? Uh, so all glass is safe for razor blades. The thing about using a razor blade here is you just need a very low, sharp angle. So don't, don't try and scrape like this. You're gliding across it. So I'll hold it with my fingertips and just scrape across the surface. And you're not going to scratch it. Super shrink. I don't know what super shrink is. Uh oh, you're, it says, says DJ and Mike supposed to be on. The mic is off now? Oh. Huh. Can you learn tint online or in person? You can learn both ways. In person classes are going to teach you more, um, or they're going to speed you up a lot faster. But what I suggest is using every resource that you have available. Okay. Get some film, get some tools, learn. It says the mic is on. It's funny people. Oh, well, that's annoying. Right. So it's this one. Why? Hang on, let me turn it back on and see. I'm out. Did the thing get bumped? No, it's still light night. Let me take a look. I wonder if that thing popped out a little bit. Yeah, this, hang on, hang on, hang on. This, yeah, this part. It just, we're fixing it. There we go. Should be good now. They have this like a little stupid adapter at the, bo at, at the back of it that if you like, it might've been when I first put it in there. But if it's not lined up right, it's not gonna work. Okay, one more time. We're gonna squeegee this thing top to bottom, just to be sure. Windshields, you can never be too sure. Cause it's so easy to get some dirt in them. Cross. As I said, I thought some windows come with a coating from a factory, so you shouldn't use a razor blade. Some windows come with a coating, so you shouldn't use a razor blade. There's like a handful from Toyota and Lexus. Uh, you're going to look for a UVU stamp, and uh, chances are you don't have that. Somebody asked him, would it be easier to take the harness out of the way? 
Would it be easier to take the harness out of the way? Uh, yeah, it would be. But here we are. I can work around it because it'll just push up out of the way real quick. Um, so we're going to prep this now for an install. So I'm going to wipe off the underside. Somebody asked earlier, what can you do to make a windshield cleaner? That's always a question on my mind, trying to figure out little things that I can do to make it turn out just that much better. So there's a, there's a coating underneath here of dryer sheet, and I just wanna make sure I wipe the glass, and I wipe the edges of the film here, just to try and prevent things from flushing back in there. I'm gonna wet this back down. We're gonna roll this back over. Um, any anxiety about the ECM? I always get nervous I'll get it wet. <laughs> any anxiety about the BCM? Always. There's, there's always some underlying. Uh, F-150s, Fords, Chevys, they're generally way more okay. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means either. Big frame. What do you mean by windows with big frames? What, uh, what, okay, good question. What, what do I clean the window with after I've tinted it? You can clean the window with a whole bunch of stuff after you tinted it, a soapy water. Um, most popular is just a nice tint safe glass cleaner. So you just wanna make sure you have an ammonia free glass cleaner and you'll be fine. It'll say right on the bottle. You can even use Windex, as long as it says ammonia free. Somebody said, do you always back roll it while it's still on the windshield? I worry about contamination. Um, do you always back roll it? Yeah, uh, on the windshield specifically, just because I'm so used to it, I would love to put it on a glass board. I don't have one that's really big <laughs> enough to accommodate for this, but I will soon. Um, and I'll try it out. But that's one reason I'm going through wiping the edges and stuff like that, being really extra thorough about it. But I've been doing it this way for a long time. So doing it a different way, I'd be a little bit unfamiliar until I get some more practice in for it. But I'll try it when I get those. We were supposed to have them yesterday. All right, so the first thing is we peel the liner and then we're gonna set this back down, right on top of the film, uh, but we've wet that down. So the liner is there, but it's loose. And so we gotta free it up on the other side as well. Oh, like the, the deep seal ones. Offhand, I don't have any comments that would help. This is more of like a visual thing. I just learned to kind of deal with it. The easier way is just to bottom load something like that, but then you gotta try and take it apart. Somebody said I'd be happy to know any tips to make my install quicker. Reps. Yeah, lots of repetition will make your installs faster. Putting yourself under a stopwatch and just giving yourself a time the way that I, I mean, I've gotten slower. The way that I got faster was I worked for places that didn't give me any chance to be slow. They had more cars and I had to figure out how to just speed up and deal with it. Now that I'm in my own shop and I have my own time, I just take my sweet old time here. I give myself a nice easy schedule. I think a healthy time though is sides and rear should be done within two hours with the windshield should be done within three hours if you're just to like stay busy, grow a shop. As an individual, you could always go a little bit slower, but like if you're not getting a good premium on your jobs and that's kind of in like the $200 price range and you're spending like three or four hours, like it's, it's decent money for the day, but it's hard to grow your business off of that. So you gotta either compensate for that by moving faster or charging more. Okay, so this is all rolled up. This is the magic part. 
Yeah, what's up with this? TikTok not coming through on here? Let me close this and try again. Right quick. Hang on, I'm just... Gotta nibble on some film for a second. How much are you charging for this tape drive? I want to do the same thing with my application. How much are you charging for this one? I can't tell you the special price that he's getting. So this normally is five fifty. It is for a very good client. He's brought quite a few vehicles, and we're even doing one special for him because there was a mistake on the last truck. I didn't have carbon fifty, so I gave him a free upgrade to ceramic. But now he has lived with the free upgrade on his last vehicle, so now I have to give it again. Because once you go with ceramic, like he's like, please make that mistake again. <laughs> it's like what mistake? He's like the ceramic on the windshield. I was like. Now I have to. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. Somebody said 550. That's not just for the windshield, though. That's the whole truck. No, that is the whole truck. So we've already done the rest of the truck. If the glass is getting replaced, then it was 550. <laughs> and then have you ever done a semi truck full windshield? Have you ever done a semi truck full windshield? No, I have not. And I don't want to, ever. Front doors took me long enough. When it gets into the big rig uh, equipment, I just don't, I, I've never worked at places that really got asked about it much at all. So it was like the occasional set of semi doors and that was it. I just don't live in those areas. How do you hear the comments live? How do you hear the comments? Well, part of it is Mark right now. He is reading them over there, thankfully. Uh, but I have a, a headset for most of the other ones, but the software is being stupid right now. So like, oh, I don't even have a great answer for that. So you'd have to take off the stickers and reapply them. Or I've heard some people will just have the customer go get new registration stickers. Because if they're the, they're the shitty paper ones, there's no way about it. Like, you have to scrape them off or cut a big, ugly square around it. Have you done a cyber truck? No, I'm not that cool, unfortunately. I miss a lot of that business. It's kind of sad. I would love to be one of the first people to get it. Uh, but I think I'm usually one of the last shops to get it. So, hey. I'm trying though. Because we're so low stress, aren't we? We're low. <laughs> yeah, doing a Cybertruck windshield would be an ins a, a fun amount of stress. <laughs> I feel like I, I'd I'd have no choice but have to do it. But I think you would have to help, and we'd need a third person then to hold the camera for it. What's the hardest car you've tinted? Hardest. Old shit. It's always old shit. I can hold <sighs> yeah, not too long ago, um, I had like an old Porsche 922, so it wasn't even like the hardest one. Um, but anything classic, I just have to throw a handful of patterns at just to get a window right. And they just take me way too much time. Uh, do you do anything other than tint, like PPF and vinyl or ceramic coatings? No, but soon we're adding paint protection film. Uh, we also are adding flat glass services too. So we're going to be doing an entire remodel uh, of this place, building a whole thousand square foot loft. And then we're building out an entire new PPF bay that's just like this bay. Um, and then hiring somebody for that, I don't know, we're figuring it out. It's not gonna be me though. Is that heat gun for Walmart? It's a Wagner, but I don't think it's necessarily. Yeah, the, the heat gun you can get at Walmart, you can actually find it pretty much anywhere, little Wagner ones. Uh, those are my favorite like budget friendly heat gun. Last I saw in a Home Depot, they were like, what, $30? They went from like twenty dollars to then like thirty-five. What's a good budget-friendly tint film 
to start tinning on clients' cars? Mm, on clients' cars, it's tough. Because there, there aren't very many good budget options anymore. Inflation, well, like, so I use GeoShield, for example, and I trust that on anybody's car. Um, their prices really have not changed. And a lot of the cheap films have really gone up in price. So I just don't really have any good recommendations. I know, like, a practice film, I could refer you over to Amazon. You can get something called T-View. But other than that, good quality films per car are not that expensive. It's really just the learning. You think printing full time pays off? Yes, it does when it's set up right. So tinting is absolutely a full time job, full time career. Uh, I was tinting for a mobile company. If I wasn't doing video, I would be, uh, I mean, and I could just focus on tinting. I made good money tinting. One of my best years mobile was 95 grand in a year. That was going to other shops, not like going from house to house. So like when the program is set up right and you're good at what you do, you can make a lot of money doing it. The hard part is always growing the business. So when you are your only employee and like you are the reason the business comes in, you start splitting your attention where you really have to focus as much as you can on tinting or growing the business and you have to start learning a whole lot of other skill sets. So it's not just you learn the skill of tinting and then you have a successful business. You have to learn how to stand out in a world of competition. So at bars are constantly being raised in this industry. So it's, it's always work. All right, so windshield is almost done. We are going to scrub it off and check it over. Can you tap on the top camera and the, the Osmo and see if it's still, yep, still good? Okay. Dude, I have no idea what I would do if I was not tinting. And I wasn't expecting to become a full-time tinter. I just, my dad owned an auto accessories company. I was going, I was, I was there as a detailer. And then I was going to school learning aviation mechanics. So I would probably have continued doing that. But during that time, I learned how to tint. And then I, this was around 2009. So like we just went through a big housing market crash and I n spoke to people that were in the aviation field that got laid off. And I was like, fuck that. <laughs> so I kept tinting. So. It's obvious, I think you would've been a male model. <laughs> a male model. Clear. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we are finishing this off. Cool. Good, because we're almost done. It's like a, ha ha, gotcha. All right, I gotta wipe this off, pull the rope out. I'm nervous about this part because I don't want to fuck up my film. Oh, it scares me. Yeah. See if we got some water too. This is a different style rope too. So this is what we put those down there for to catch. Wow. <laughs> catch all that. <laughs> yeah, for as squished as it was right there, that worked out pretty well. Um, but you always want to put those safeguards in place when you're working on windshields. I mean, it goes without saying, water can snake any which way down to 
sensitive things, but we have to use water for the install. So water's gotta go somewhere. Most vehicles are generally fine, even if you don't put something down there, but you never really wanna take that chance because there's particular vehicles that are not fine. Rams and 300s and Chrysler stuff. Okay, so we got a little finger here on the side too that I'll touch up. Somebody asked about that earlier. Oh, what makes more money, mobile shop, or mobile or shop tinting? What makes more money? Uh, depends on how they're set up. I think a shop, but for an individual, I think one of the best setups is, is the way we did mobile. So a lot of people think of mobile as running from house to house. Fuck that. <laughs> That's a lot of setup time. When you're going to people's houses, you're, you're trying to figure out, do they have enough space? Do they have a garage for me? A lot of people don't. So you're missing out on certain clients. Got a little, little thing here. So mobile tinning can be a grind, but when you partner up with shops in really nice areas, all of a sudden you're getting a whole different type of clientele and they have business. It's hard for a lot of shops to retain good people. So when you are that good people, I mean, then you can make really, really good money. But like a business as a whole, it's tough because you have a lot more to worry about. You have people, you have overhead and expenses. So if it's just one person for themselves, partner up with shops, make a lot of money. You don't have to tint for tint shops. You can tint for auto accessories companies, glass companies, other associated services. Like there's lots of ways to make money as a tinter. If you have that skill, I would, if you're, and you're slow, I would not just basically hold that skill hostage to like only the jobs that you can, you can then get in. Do you hand cut your doors? Yes, yes, I hand cut pretty much all the windows that I do. Plotters piss me off sometimes. They're, they're helpful tools, but I find as one person, it's not, gonna, it's not gonna save me a lot of time by plotter cutting doors, and they usually will let me down. So, all right. All right, let's go to the other side. We got one little thing to touch up. How could you partner with a shop if you're a mobile tender? What do I tell them? Is it working? Sorry, I'm checking really quick. Okay, yeah, no, we're working, I think. What was the question? How do you partner with a shop if you're a mobile tender? What do I tell them? How do you partner with a shop? You literally walk in, ask to talk to the owner, and go, hey, I'm a window tinner. Do you need window tint? Like, it's not hard. It's like how I got this. Yeah, like, seriously, there's not some sort of... A lot of those shops are owned by people like me. Like, a lot of the owners are involved in the day-to-day, -day, um, or there's a store manager. And the thing is, like, you're going in and you're solving a problem. If you're going into a glass company and you're like, hey, I'm a window tinner, they're gonna be like, oh, we get asked about window tint all the time. And then you work up a program for them. So ideally what that usually looks like is you set aside, um, usually like one or two days a week. Ah, that's okay. Just leave it for now. We're streaming, damn it. We're almost done. Um, but you set up one or two days a week, I ideally just one in the beginning. So we would give shops like a Monday or Tuesday or like a Thursday or Friday. And we would see what they would do. Hey, book up as many cars as you can. And, uh, and we'll go from there. If you can fill up that day, then we'll give you a second day. And we would generally take 75 to 80% um, of the total sale on that. So they, they do make some money off of it, but it's not like it's it's really you're you're accommodating for service 
and it's a nice add-on for them. So it's a pretty good partnership. Do you request a deposit for your customers? I request a deposit for all my customers uh, just because it's, it's helped a ton with people that just want to waste your time. So especially when you're a new business, what you're going to find is a lot of people are going to call you and they're just going to say, yes, 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 yes. Maybe you weren't the most convenient. Maybe you were a little bit more expensive and they just told you, of course I'll book. So if you don't put that barrier there and you don't have a lot of clients built up, then you're just going to deal with people that waste your time. So you book out a three hour spot for them. You'll be sitting there waiting for them and like, fuck, why aren't these people showing up? But as soon as you go through all that and you go, hey, I need a deposit, they're either gonna hang up the phone or just tell you, oh, uh, hang on, I'll get back to you on that. And then they're no longer a time waster. And you're not insulting people by asking for some type of deposit. If they're like legit and gonna spend money with you, then they're gonna leave a deposit. I've never had an issue with it. Oh, Ford mirrors. This is the this is the best Ford mirror. I got a few bubbles in the middle. I gotta push out. So this Ford mirror has a screw. All the newer ones have a screw, or they're a real easy style. I got a few bubbles down here. That probably took care of that. Oh wait, no, I see this. Cool. Looks good, looks good. Oh, I already pushed out all the side stuff. Yeah, so any, what do you do about the bad Ford mirrors? Uh, I generally just leave them alone. I have a newer tool that somebody sent me. Oh, I do, huh, that's weird. Sometimes they come in and sometimes they don't. Somebody sent me this thing. It looks a little funny, but this is literally made to like remove the older style Ford mirrors. So this will like slide up under the mirror and then you tighten this up. I haven't had a chance to try this, but like I want to. Yeah, cool. I got it literally right before I went out of town, but it's also like 80 or $90. So it's a little steep, but it looks cool. <sighs> All right. Well, I think we'll close this up and uh, we'll show what this looks like and then we'll uh, sign off here. But as we close these doors, it's gonna get darker and darker. So this is 15 on the front. It's technically five then on the back. So it's factory tinted and then we put a layer 20 over it. And then we got that 50 on the windshield. And so 50 I really like cause it adds a nice smoked look to it, but it doesn't make it look super dark so if you're a little like i want my windshield tinted but i don't want to stand out too bad 50 is like i think like perfect Pro tinting. Says i'm not touching any ford mirrors <laughs> yeah i don't blame you who hurt you <laughs> all righty well thanks everybody for watching i appreciate you being here we'll do another live stream here soon but i'll see you later all right i'll end it bye What's up, YouTube? This is TikTok. But I got to sign off here, too. So thanks for, uh, for hanging out. I just got to make sure everything's all set and cash out this customer. So I got to go over there. So bye.